everybody and welcome back to Creeps and Creeps. My name is Cece Delaney and today we have a very, very straightforward episode. We're going to be discussing the case of Dear David. I even put up my little, oh god, I can't point, that thing. Look, it kind of looks like a little fire. How fun, how spooky. I did that because I wanted to add some ambiance to the general vibe of the room today. It's scary story time, baby. But first, before we get into it, hello, hi. Hope everyone's having a fabulous day. I am. I'm actually recording way earlier than normal, so snaps. <laughs> We're doing the damn thing today. This is definitely going to be a more visual episode, so if you normally stream through podcast, I would highly recommend going over to the YouTube channel so you can see all of the Dear David madness that's going to be on the screen. I'll do my best to describe it, but I'm notoriously bad at describing things, so good luck. Oh yeah, okay, so if you're new here... <laughs> please feel free to subscribe if you decide that you like this content by the end of the episode. And if you don't, sorry, I'll try again next week. Hopefully we'll see you back. But if you're a returning viewer and you've subscribed and you just like to vibe out here every week, hello and welcome back. Love you so much. Thank you for returning. Now let's get this friggin' show on the road. Just to preface this, I have set it up more like a story versus reading. And then on October 23rd, 2017, Adam tweeted this. We're just gonna read my dramatization that I came up with. The first time Dear David shows up is as Adam was experiencing sleep paralysis and saw a child with a huge misshapen dented head sitting in a green rocking chair at the foot of his bed. It kind of looks like the head has a crater just dented into it. It's super gross. And the boy sat silently for a while until he got up from his chair and started slowly Slowly ambling toward Adam in his bed, was still paralyzed with fear. Seconds before the sunken head child reached Adam, he woke up screaming and freaking out. A few nights later, Adam had another dream where he was sitting in a library and a girl came up to him and said, you've seen Dear David, haven't you? Adam was like, who the fuck is that? And she replied, Dear David, you saw him. He's dead. He only appears at midnight and you can ask him two questions if you've said Dear David first, but never try to ask him a third question or he'll kill you. So aside from that super gross dream, things kind of seem pretty normal for Adam moving forward for a few days. But eventually, David comes back and he's sitting back in his green rocking chair near the window with his horrible dented skull staring at Adam. Adam asks, Dear David, how did you die? And David mumbles, an accident in a store. This prompted another question and Adam asks, Dear David, what happened in the store? Which David replies, a shelf was pushed onto my head. Frozen in fear and without thinking, Adam shoots out his third question and says, who pushed the shelf? David stares blankly, silent, and Adam remembers with a cold chill that he has asked the dreaded third question. At that, he woke up terrified at the possible consequences of his innocuous last question. Adam decided that he should Google the deaths in his city to see if there ever even really was a child named David who died in a store, like the misshapen head child from his nightmares, but nothing. Even after searching similar names like Daniel and Dylan and Devin, but there still was nothing. No child died in that specific circumstance in his area. A few more weeks of reprieve go by and Adam starts to think that maybe he's in the clear and this was all just some horrifying nightmare. In fact, Adam's luck seemed to even turn around. The bigger, nicer apartment above his was vacated, so he jumped on that opportunity to move in and upgrade his space. Adam would spend the next two months or so moving into his new apartment and getting settled in and all but completely forgot about Dear David. That was until he noticed his cats acting super strangely. He caught them four nights in a row, crouched by his front door, staring intently, almost in a hunting position as if someone was just looming on the other side of the door. As tensions mounted for Adam, he got that awful sensation as if something was in the hallway outside of his unit. He anxiously peered out of the peephole and saw a quick movement. On instinct, he yanked the door open, but the hallway was empty. Unnerved, he shut his door, turned around, and saw his cats, who were clearly worked up about something. Their tails were bushy, and they were back in their hunting pose, and they were not okay with whatever invisible force was just outside of their home. This pattern became a habit. At midnight, the cats would go to the door, stare it down in their little hunting pose, and it really didn't stop until the end of this whole tale. 
Adam even posted a picture of his cat with his clock showing midnight as the cat's staring at the door. And he also posted a video just kind of for uh, proof's sake that this was really happening at this time. Now, if you do own a cat and you've seen them when they want out of a door, then this clip will be really familiar to you. Basically, his cat seemed to be doing everything in its power to sniff through the door with its little nose shoved against the corner and trying to figure out what's on the other side. This cat was in full investigation mode. And then Adam, this absolute menace of a man, took a picture through his peephole so he could torture his Twitter followers and also see what was happening. If you look at the set of two pictures, one is through the peephole directly into the hallway. There's a staircase to the left, a banister, and a bookshelf against the left wall. And in the first picture you can see some sort of like round head like shape lingering on the stairs just out of full view between the bookshelf and the banister in the second photo when adam opens the door there's literally nothing it's just blank empty space adam being the curious cat that he is shuts his door and takes another two people perspective photos immediately after he was thinking okay well maybe there was a smudge on the camera lens or on the peephole which is a valid concern but again, there's a shape between the banister and the bookshelf, but this time it's kind of further down the stairs and in the second picture, again, nothing. At this point, he says fuck that and deadbolted the lock and hurried off to bed to the sounds of his cat still meowing at the door. So the next night, Adam gets the bright idea to download a sleep talk app. He thinks, okay, maybe if someone is outside of the door, I can hear them, and maybe it's just some sort of person moving around the hallways, which, side note, would be really weird considering this is a duplex and it's, like, either the bottom or top apartment. There's really no reason for someone to be wandering around his floor unless he wants in. Anywho, he also thought maybe the cats are just overreacting and really nothing happening. It could just be a simple explanation. So just before heading to bed, he stops by his front door just in time to see his cats taking up their midnight post right on schedule, freaking out at the door. Naturally, the next morning, Adam wakes up and checks his app, but all that it really picked up was street noise like cars and buses, so he started fucking around with the settings to try and figure out a way to avoid that for that night. After about 1,000 Twitter followers being like, Adam, I swear to God, if you don't put a salt line in Sage, we're going to fucking lose our minds. So he did post a picture of a salt line that he had sprinkled in front of the door in an effort to keep the bad juju where it belonged and not in his house. Now we're on to August 11th, 2017. Apparently, the app would record a few segments at a time whenever it heard a sound, and Adam woke up to 33 separate recordings. Most of the sounds were just street noise again, but three in particular, taken between 2 and 3 a.m., the witching hour, caught his attention. And one specifically sounded like a snap and one step. despite the fact that Adam didn't leave his bed once all night and lived completely alone. The second one is the sound of an electric static. which kind of comes up a little later, so just hold on to that little nugget of information. The third recording is directly after the electric static, in which you can hear a snap, and then Adam himself groans in his sleep. On August 12th, Adam decides to take a much-needed reprieve from his haunting, oppressive apartment, and he posts the selfie right before he goes out. In the background, one Twitter user noticed that there may be a reflection that looks a lot like eyes, nose, mouth, and a misshapen head. It was on, um, like a glass French door type, so it maybe could have been one of the pictures on his wall behind the door. It wasn't but it could have been. In proper 2017 fashion, Adam went out and bought him a Polaroid camera. That was definitely during the resurgence of Polaroids, so it's unsurprising to me. But in a total Zach Baggins move, he took some pictures of his apartment for ghostly reasons. He even posted a picture of the Polaroid camera basically being like, Polaroids are stupid and fun and inherently sort of creepy. I didn't expect to find anything, and for the most part, I didn't. 
Except he did. And then he tortured the rest of us with the pictures. So he posts two pictures of his living room and bedroom, where you can clearly see his haunted green creepy ass rocking chair. Okay, so nothing's happening. Cool. Awesome. Good sign. Until he gets to that damn ass hallway outside of his apartment. When he takes his third photo, it's completely black, despite the fully lit hallway. So, all right, unusual, but being the rational adult that he is, he goes big brain mode and rips open a fresh pack to see if he got, like, a pack of undeveloped Polaroid. But it turns out that when the Polaroid is undeveloped, it's all white, just fresh out of the pack. So there's no reason it should be a black photo. So naturally the second test comes in and he wanted to figure out maybe he put his little finger over the lens. Guess not, because when that picture develops, it's obviously covered. Like it's black, but it's grainy, like something's covering the lens. It's not the complete pitch black darkness. Then to further validate his unusual Polaroid development, he takes a video of himself taking a picture with his Polaroid camera in his living room, then into the hallway. Okay, here's my living room. And I'll leave that there. Okay, now I'm gonna take a photo of the hallway just to show you what that's like. As you can see, the first one has already developed. So let's see what this one does. It's gonna take a minute. But it is developing black. So I don't know. But I'm also very easily duped, so <laughs> this could be a Photoshop job. And I'm like, oh my god, spooky. So anyway, someone in the Twitter thread suggested that he take a picture further away, like kind of backs up into his living room. And so he does. Once with his iPhone and then again with his Polaroid. When he compared the iPhone picture to the Polaroid picture, it's honestly, to me, unnerving. But again, easily duped. For this next section, please don't come for me. I understand that this can be considered appropriative, but I'm just telling the story. Please don't shoot the messenger, okay? So Adam goes out on the advice of his Twitter fans and he bought some sage with the intention to cleanse his apartment, specifically focusing on the hallway and chair. But that night would prove to be a restless night for Adam. He kept waking up feeling like something was wrong. And to his horror, the saging backfired in a big way. After about a month of David searching for Adam in his old apartment, seems like the sage was a bit of a beacon for him because he finally found Adam again. In his dream, Adam's room was hazy with smoke and through the billowing haze sat David. It had been just two weeks and his cats were still taking their midnight front door posts very seriously. But that was the least of his issues at this point. Adam was still going strong with the sleep recorder and started to notice a really upsetting pattern that around three every morning he would pick up the same electric static sound and it would last about five minutes before stopping for no apparent reason. His Twitter feed was going absolutely bananas at this point trying to encourage Adam to peace the hell out and find a new apartment but I mean who's to say dear David wouldn't follow him. He already found Adam once and sure maybe it was the apartment building itself but that's a really expensive risk to take in the event that it's not just the apartment. Adam started noticing that he was getting more tired more easily than normal. And so he started packing it in a little earlier and going to bed about an hour or two before normal, which was great for Dear David because that gave him plenty of time to menace Adam in his sleep. This time, Dear David held Adam firmly by his arm and was dragging Adam through an abandoned warehouse. Adam followed along, unable to fight back, and allowed David to drag him around. The dream suddenly stopped there and Adam fell into a deeper sleep. When he woke up, he really didn't give it a second thought until he got out of his shower and noticed a mark on his arm. When he looked closer, it was a huge bruise right where David had held fast in the dream. But why panic? 
Logic dictates that it could have happened the day before and maybe he was in some sort of subtle pain and didn't really notice. And because Adam was so worked up by dear David, he dreamt that David had hurt him and then he hadn't just like slammed his arm into something and gotten a bruise that way. So Adam brushes it off and goes around his regular Saturday morning coffee bagel run. Now living in a city, you start to expect certain consistencies around you. That specific Starbucks is always full of Pilates instructors on Saturday morning. The park across the street from you is plagued with feral children going nuts at the playground. And the food cart repair depot never had a slow morning. You could always count on a horde of vendors getting their carts serviced and repaired for the Saturday night bar crawls. But a cold chill washed over Adam as he realized that the normally bustling car repair depot was empty. In fact, it was more than empty. It was gutted and totally abandoned. This was especially strange considering Adam had lived in that neighborhood for years and there wasn't even an angling of closure, so why now and why so suddenly? Curious, Adam went into the building, thinking that there might be a clue as to what caused the sudden halt to the business, like maybe there was a closure flyer somewhere that he had just missed. But it was almost completely empty, save for one green chair sitting right next to a large concrete beam. This particular chair was different from the one in his room, as this one was more of like that country ranch style kitchen chair, as opposed to what looks like an Ikea rocking chair in his room. It only took the amount of time for Adam to leave the warehouse, get his bagel, get his coffee, and start to walk home for the warehouse to be completely shuttered. I'm talking those big bay doors completely closed down. There was not a way really to get inside unless you had actual access or were willing to break in. Who knows? All of these experiences combined the chair, his bruise, dreaming about an empty warehouse, and then passing by one that was literally never empty was beginning to affect Adam and sleep started to elude him. Hi, so I girl bossed a little too close to the sun, it turns out. And this video is going to be about an hour long. So what we're going to go ahead and do is split it up into two parts. I promise I'll have the next part out after the next true crime episode. So just look out for part two of Dear David. So sorry, see you then.